hello friends welcome to this next lecture and in this lecture we will understand that how microcomputer works and i am sure that your understanding about microcomputer will improve uh, this shows the block diagram of microprocessor based system meaning that the central processing unit here is replaced by a single integrated chip IC and we call it as a microprocessor. Then we have seen that any computer has the storage memory uh, it comprises of two sections read only memory and RAM and then we have IO devices. Now look at this microprocessor is connected to every other devices by means of conducting tracks and it is called as a bus. What is the bus actually? Uh, for example, this is the logic board, circuit board of the computer and uh, this ink is the conducting material and you see I am drawing one line, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. These are conducting lines on this board and when I connect some voltage level here, this voltage level will go there and will be available here. So these conducting tracks are used for transportation of electrical signals. In our case, transportation of digital data from one place to the other place. So this is called as a bus, just as our bus, public transport bus, which is used for transportation of passengers right so we have three buses in computer the one is the address bus the other is the data bus and the third one is the control bus in short they are also called as a bus d bus and c bus okay now let us see what is the address bus as i said microprocessor has control on all the devices microprocessor can select one of these devices ROM or RAM or this IO interface circuitry not only that this ROM and RAM consist of hundred thousands of location and that has to be selected for the operation either giving the information storing the information or the fetching the information taking the information and therefore every device and every location within that memory has a unique address. What is the address? Just as our house has, our home has the address. What is the address? What it does? How it helps? Say in India, uh, on national level, so your house is located in particular country, particular state, particular district, or your hometown, and then you have certain main road, then you have certain colony, then you have lay and then house number is there. So with that specification, it becomes easy to locate your home and it is a unique address. In the same way, to select one of these main sections and one of the location, it has a unique address and of course, address must be in binary format. As I said, everything goes into the binary. So microprocessor has to select particular location or particular device and therefore it always sends the address on address bus. Look at the arrow here on address bus. It goes from microprocessor, then it goes to ROM or it goes to RAM or it goes to IO interface. It is that being this address bus is unidirectional. Unidirectional means from microprocessor to different devices okay and what is the function of this bus just to carry address sent by microprocessor to various devices then look at this data bus data bus again <coughs> is connected from the microprocessor to every other devices and look at the arrows data bus is actually bidirectional because microprocessor has to give data store the information or microprocessor has to fetch data, take the data and therefore the mostly 
data bus is unidirectional and therefore look at this arrow I have shown it with the bidirectional that means data can be taken into a uh, data can go from microprocessor here also data may be coming from microprocessor stored into RAM or data may be <coughs> read from the <coughs> sorry, RAM and read by the microprocessor similarly data may be given by the microprocessor to output devices or data may be read from the input devices via interface to the microprocessor only change is that read only memory and as we have mentioned read only memory means microprocessor only can read so there is a only one direction content of ROM can be read only therefore only upward direction whereas here both way both way both way so the function of data bus is to carry the data information from memory to microprocessor or from microprocessor to memory this is the content of memory location and earlier we discussed the address of memory location okay and then we have third bus that I have shown with dotted line you see this and again what is this this is the bus and it has conducting track and it carries the timing and control signals from the microprocessor to this ROM chip and RAM chip and IO interface chips so for controlling their functions then let us consider the function of all blocks in short uh, we have discussed this in last class that is clock this is a uh, just a crystal or uh, some LC oscillator this decides the frequency of that clock generator and accordingly you get the speed of microprocessor to have a common time base then this is the part of memory it is a permanent memory read only memory and it is used to store monitor programs or operating system of the computer then we have this random access memory we call it as a read memory and it is used as a scratch pad and usually we store our program and information that is data into the RAM and then there is another important section that is IO interface section IO stands for input output interface so actually this part of this circuitry works as a mediator between input output devices and the microprocessor so uh, information from the input device is given to the microprocessor uh, by IO interface or uh, the process data uh, process information from the microprocessor is given to the output device by IO interface and of course all the uh, sections are controlled by the microprocessor and these are IO devices are for uh, human interface as we have seen input device converts man readable language into the machine language and output device converts uh, machine language into the man readable format so before controlling session uh, uh, let me tell you the difference between uh, the opcode and operand instruction and the data and how a uh, microcomputer executes the programs we know that computer works on a uh, stored program concept suppose your program is stored in the RAM what is program? program is actually set of instructions for a given job and instructions are nothing but uh, operation code operation codes and this operation takes place on that is called as operand or you may simply call it as a data for example I write one instruction add 35h this is standard instruction see EDI is just a code in English A B I 3 letter this is the operation code and this is the just instruction can say and what is to be added is 3 file operation is added and 3 file is the data 
so this is the output and this is the operand of the data okay now all these instructions are stored instruction 1 instruction 2 instruction 3 instruction 4 100 instruction 500 instruction 1000 instruction and this is your program in the ram then when you execute the program how microprocessor executes so microprocessor sends address of the first instruction which is stored in the ram then the output is taken on the data bus and it goes into the microprocessor where it decodes it identifies meaning of the code for example this is the code something like this 75 75 is the code for say addition when this binary pattern reaches there microprocessor understand that something is to be added after this and what is that if i is to be added so this is the of four right then it goes to the next instruction then it goes to the next instruction instruction after instruction sending the address getting the operation code getting the data performing that operation then sending the address of next instruction getting the operation code identifying the operation executing it sending the address of the next instruction getting the operation code identifying it executing in this way it continues till the last instruction in the program this is how microprocessor works so in short we can summarize the function of microprocessor as what it does it fetches decodes and executes instructions then it transfers data or information from one block to other then it generates timing and control signals for controlling the system and lastly it gives proper response to interrupts so let us discuss in brief uh this is the function of this microprocessor what it does just we have described fetches fetches means taking the instruction is the fetching then identifying its meaning what is that code stands for that is a decoding and then generating the timing and control signal in order to that that instruction is uh, the, the job is done that is what it is a execution that's why in a three words it can summarize its function fetching the instruction decoding identifying and then executing then most of the time microprocessor transfer data from one block to the other so that is important task then it generates timing and control signal as we have said it is a master and it has a control over the total system and therefore it generates timing and control signal for the controlling and lastly it gives a proper response to interrupts so for any system to work properly there must be the provision for the interrupts and the giving proper response to the interrupts i hope that uh, you have understood how microcomputer works thank you for listening patiently bye